Hey guys, Chris J with Johnson Script here, and today we're going to be reviewing APIs. API stands for Application Program Interface, and specifically we're going to be focusing on web-based APIs, as there are many different types of APIs. APIs allow us to request data from third-party sources and pull that data into our projects, which is an incredible tool considering we can leverage the processing power and storage of that API, allowing our user to have access to a lot more data than would be physically possible locally on their device. So let's take a look at where to find APIs and how to use them. Typically, you can find the API of any large organization on their web page, like YouTube or Spotify. They provide you with a URL and authentication key, which allows you to request data from them. If we go to Quick Start on Spotify's API page, they even show us exactly what to do when we want the request in different languages. And they provide a free key for an hour, which is great. Now, there are public APIs that are 100% free. Uh, you can find those on GitHub um, or other places, but GitHub has a great list. Um, you can see all different types of categories, animals, comic books, blockchain, finance, health, programming, and much more. On this GitHub library, I found a cool Game of Thrones API called an API of Ice and Fire. And let's take a look at how we can use this in a real life example. Um, so we're going to be doing this in JavaScript. So we will be taking a look at how to use the Fetch API in JS. Now, the Fetch API is an API in the JavaScript framework, um, which allows us to request data from specific URLs. And uh, they've provided an example here, a basic, uh, simple Fetch example, which I'm going to copy into a code editor. Uh, I'm going to use CodePen. It's an online editing tool, uh, which is free. It's pretty great. And I'm going to minimize the HTML and CSS windows here, um, as well as bring up our console so we can see the output. Now, I'm going to drop that uh, fetch request in here. And then I'm going to grab our API Lights and Fire. And I drop that into the body. We get a result of the House Targaryen. As we can see, the specific URL had a uh, direction of houses and then 378. So you can see how this tool would be very useful if you were, say, building out a wiki about Game of Thrones. And um, you could pull data from this API at your user's request. Um, now, let's take a look at this in uh, another form, a web app. So I didn't build this uh, widget. I actually pulled it. Uh, it's open source on GitHub, uh, made by Nathaniel Parikh, uh, and the licensing is out of MIT. Now, I have cloned his um, GitHub repo, and I've already got it ready to go. So let's run this program. And you can see on both the results we had from Ice and Fire and uh, the results we have from this API poll is that APIs take around four seconds on average. Uh, they are not made equal. Some are faster, some are slower. Um, so there's always a hunt for the best APIs. You can see uh, it pulls this widget pulls the price of Phantom, Ethereum, Bitcoin, and Litecoin as of this minute. Now, let's take a look at the code. Um, the actual request for the API can be found in this app. Dot F underscore common JS. You can see the URL is being defined here. And then if we scroll down a little bit, we can see the fetch call and then what to do with the response of that data after that. If we were to remove that URL from our code, save it, and rerun our program, we're going to get an error because we can no longer pull from the API. Obviously, the URL is gone. I'm just going to revert back, save, and run once more just to make sure, or just to show you guys how great of a tool this really is. And right as rain, pulling live data to our project. It is fantastic. So that was a short um, how-to high overview of APIs. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, please like and subscribe.